Today, we're going to tackle something that remains an enigma even for really good poker players. In fact, pretty much everyone will rack their brains on this one at some point. I'm talking about equity, what it is, how it works, and how it can be used to make better poker decisions. Let's face it, equity is a pain in the you-know-what to grasp, especially for people like me who rode the short bus on the way to math class. For me, Anything to do with numbers or percentages, calculating equity versus ranges, etc., is extremely challenging. Fortunately, there is still a way for us non-math geniuses to use equity to our advantage, and that's what this video is all about. Stay tuned. For those of you who have not had the pleasure of trying to figure out this equity business, let's define what it is. Equity is any player's chance of winning a given poker hand by the river. Once you get to the river, equity no longer matters since there are no more cards to come and the winner is already established. Put another way, equity is how much of a pot is owned by each player on the current street. Basically it's your chance to win were the money to go all in right now. For example, if there are two players in a $10 pot and each has 50% equity, then each owns $5. If they got all in a million times, no one would win any money in this spot, but no one at the same time would lose. They would have an equal share of the equity of the pot. Now, determining your approximate equity takes a bit of practice. But it isn't as hard as it sounds. I am including a link to an article I wrote that covers the basic fundamentals of poker, including equity. If you are unsure what we are talking about, go check it out before continuing. One way to use equity is to try and make sure you get all in with more equity more often than your opponents do. That's the obvious answer, but there's so much more to it than that. Just knowing your exact equity, while helpful, is only one tiny piece of the puzzle. The type of equity you have also influences how profitable your post-flop lines will be over the long term. All you need to be able to do is understand that there are really only two types of hands of value after the flop. Either you have a made hand and connect directly to the board, or you have a draw which needs specific cards to come on the Turner River in order to improve. For the purposes of this video, let's talk about made hands or draws that have a lot of equity versus ranges but aren't the nuts. More specifically, common made hands like top pairs or common draws like flush draws or open ended straight draws. Once you categorize whether you have a made hand or draw, we can optimize our lines based on how the equity of each type of hand changes as streets progress. Put simply, Made hands tend to maintain their equity very well over multiple streets, while draws tend to fluctuate drastically. I mean, either your draw gets there and your equity increases and goes way up, or your draw doesn't get there and your equity goes way down. Simple stuff, right? So let's redefine made hands and draws based on the math of the equities. Made hands are hands that have stable equity with a progression of streets, and variable equity across ranges. Draws are hands that have variable equity with a progression of streets and stable equity across ranges. Try to picture in your head how equity looks with a made hand versus a medium to weak range. On the flop, you're way ahead and on the turn, you're almost always even further ahead. Therefore, your equity is stable over progressing streets. On the other hand, imagine you have a draw against a weak made hand and miss your draw on the turn your equity will now be a lot less than it was on the flop, meaning your equity is variable over progressing streets. Now think about how a made hand looks against a range of hands that includes a few really strong hands in it. Sure, you're way ahead against a lot of the hands in that range, but you're also way behind against some of those hands in that range. Therefore, you have variable equity across the various hands or ranges your opponent could have. Conversely, if you have a draw, your equity is pretty much the same against nearly the entirety of your opponent's made hands. In other words, you have stable equity across the range of hands. Now let's use this information to define how to play our made hands versus strong draws. 
Since we know that made hands have stable equity as streets progress, we generally want to play straightforward and build pots when our opponent's range is weak. The standard play should be to go for as many streets of value as possible. With mid-strength made hands, bet folding is our friend against most opponents. By bet folding, I mean you bet for value and then fold if raised. This works best against most weak opponents and ABC type players. However, when our opponent's range for continuing is very narrow, we want to avoid building giant pots, and of course unless SPR dictates otherwise. When an opponent's range is strong, we tend to want to pot control more often and try to get the showdown without building huge pots. Taking more passive lines such as checking back the flop is often warranted when it's hard to get value from worse hands. Instead, we benefit from keeping in the weaker parts of an opponent's range, which we can bluff catch against on later streets. Now let's talk about draws. With variable equity as streets progress hands, we know our equity will take a nosedive if we don't get there on the next street. There is no benefit to stringing our opponents out over multiple streets. Therefore, when we have high equity draws, we generally want to exert maximum pressure against the weak to medium strength hands in our opponent's range. The idea is to elicit folds with a profitable frequency based on fold equity. The standard play should be to try and leverage your stack on the flop or turn, whether against strong or weak ranges. A typical line is to go for flop check raises or turn check shoves out of position against aggressive opponents. In position, making slightly larger bets in general is also a good tactic when playing a draw. Whatever line you think will exert maximum pressure, against the weaker made hands in your current opponent's range is the key. Just represent whatever your opponent will believe to be legitimately strong. Whatever this happens to look like in a particular dynamic is based on your opponent's perceived level of thinking. The exception is when you hold a low equity draw. In that case, it is often better to take whatever line will allow you to realize your equity with a higher frequency. The balance between collecting on fold equity and equity realization is a constant struggle for good players and something you will need to actively work on. Now let's sum up what we have talked about. The fewer made hands we beat, the better it is to have a draw. Against straightforward opponents, you will tend to have more equity when you semi-bluff shove and get called than if you shove with a made hand. Basically, it's much better to have a draw when facing a tight player or up against the tighter part of an opponent's range. The more hand combinations we beat, the better it is to hold a made hand. In short, made hands benefit from getting to later streets and multiple value bets. Draws benefit from maximizing fold equity and ending the hand early as often as possible. I feel like I'm oversimplifying this and there are so many more ways to use this information to our advantage. Hopefully I've given you something to think about the next time you are building your own ranges and standard lines. Overall, understanding how equity works in poker all comes down to the relationship between how made hands or draws play out versus opponent ranges. Among the concepts you must master to win at poker is to develop our sense of how to approach post-flop play using equity and ranges as a tool to optimize your lines based on the information at hand. By adjusting your lines according to the makeup of those ranges, you can maximize your profit while also simplifying the decision-making process. For more detailed information on this, including equity denial, how equity works in multi-way pots, and how to balance your play, check out my detailed article on this subject. You can either click on the link above or below, or Google automaticpoker.com forward slash equity. Thanks for watching.